You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. This is Randy. In the future, all DC Comics crossover events will span multiple years. All of them. Just just (laughs) keep going. Forever. And you're not going to know what it is or when. It's just going to happen randomly (laughs) maybe not even in the proper order in the future it will be revealed that archie of archie comics was not a natural redhead black eyebrows <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, uh, or is it? <laughs> it's nefarious. It is. It is. <laughs> like what's what's that all about? What's he stand to gain? <laughs> is he dying his eyebrows or is he dying his hair? And would uh Betty and Veronica love him so much if he didn't have those uh those red locks? <laughs> <laughs> you know I uh, <laughs> you, I don't know where I was going. You, you with don't that. <laughs> you don't often hear people refer to red locks, but yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Grolix Podcast. This is episode number forty eight. Yes. Creeping up on fifty. Oh man. That'll happen uh next month. Yep. What uh, this episode, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about some comics, which, which doesn't always happen. Usually, yeah, like com- comics that have been released in the last year. Yeah, <laughs> and even at that, we're still a little behind the curve, but not by much. Yeah, we're going to talk about the button crossover kind of event. <laughs> it's kind of kind of a crossover. Yeah, kinda. I mean, it's definitely a crossover. I'm not sure what to what end. Kind of ties into rebirth, but yeah, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have opinions, or I have questions. I have both. I have opinion questions. He has opinionated questions. Qu qu opinions. (laughs) (laughs) I have qu opinions about this. Oh, questions. Oh, questions. Yes. Qu opinions. (laughs) I have interrogative editorial. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's good. Oh man, uh, in-house news, I guess. Before we get to that, I am recording in a brand new house—not a brand new house, but a brand new uh, uh, studio, new Randy Land. <laughs> new Randy Land. Yep, it's way better than you know. Like we have that negative connotation with new things. Where you're like new Coke, blah. Well, this is this is not like new Coke. N- no, not at all. This is <laughs> this is way better than new Coke. This ain't no crystal clear Randy Land. No, this is clearly Canadian. No, it's not. Yeah, clearly can. <laughs> or, or I guess clear, cl- clear American, clearly American. What happened to clearly Canadian? I don't see that anymore. But I see clear it's American. Back. Is it? It's back. Yeah, I actually had one today. Oh man. I yeah, still they were at, those they're at high V. I'm gonna get some, but it's like a limited run, so they're gonna make you pay double what you used to pay. <laughs> oh, it's less yeah. exciting. What makes it Canadian? I know. <laughs> what 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 makes it Canadian? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess is the water from Canada. Oh, maybe maybe that's it. We need to uh, we need to ask uh, Roman and Robert. Yeah, what is it that makes it Canadian? Uh. <laughs> And just randomly send a tweet to him. <laughs> what about clearly Canadian makes it clearly Canadian? Because it's not completely clear. I mean, the water is, but. <laughs> <laughs> but <it's> very. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's it's uh, the water sources from. Oh, I'm not, I can't pronounce Canadian words. M- Manitoba. Nope. Oh, <laughs> for, <laughs> set, for, set, for, set. for Formosa, Ontario. And. Uh, Chilliwack, British Columbia. Okay, sure. That sounds close. Chilliwack, Chilliwack, Marowak. (laughs) That's Chilliwack. 
Chilliwack. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's unclear, but Canadian. <laughs> that reminds me, I owe Robert a video. I will still send him a video sometime or post a video for him about Captain Canuck. I still haven't done oh. it, but that's okay. I'm excited for some some more video content in here because the last my last studio was very small. I mean, it wasn't that small. It was a big closet, but it was still basically a closet. And oh. visually, it just did not look very dynamic. The light was poor in there. And now that I have this whole room to work with, I'm kind of going to, I can set it up so it looks nice. It's got some good light sources. Right now, I have some very temporary acoustic treatment, very cheap acoustic treatment. I don't know how well it's working, but. Uh, oh, yeah. You got like egg crate on the uh, on the wall. No egg crates. Basically, no a egg crates. Of, yeah. A bunch of thick fabric and flannel, fleecy. I don't know what <laughs> what you call. It. It's basically some like small blankets and throw blankets and stuff like that. Kind of a, up along the walls a bit. Just something soft, a little bit to kind of cut down on the the hard echoes off the walls. I gotcha. Because I still don't have everything set up. There's still a bunch of stuff in boxes. So, like, you know how it is in, like, a not totally furnished house. Everything just echoes. Right, right. And it's the cleanest it'll ever be, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was trying to keep it that way. And at one point, I was, like, kind of happy because I was like, oh, I think I got most of my stuff over there. And it still looks, like, super clean and, like, it's not cluttered. Ooh, yeah, that changed. Yeah. That changed. <laughs> it had to. Now I really it's either do that have... or either that or you weren't living there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, my closets filled up pretty quick, and then it then I was out of closet space, so the floor started filling up. Oh yeah. Do you have more or less room than the last place? Um, definitely more room. Uh, the other place I think was. Te technically a little larger but the layout of the apartment and then like all the just all of our furniture like kind of cut down the space and then as for like working space i have way more way more studio space now like it's a straight up almost completely square but straight up like bedroom that i've got going on here now as opposed to a cubby hole <laughs> nice and when and melanie's not not here this episode because she's also dealing with moving stuff but in the future, in the future, when she is here to record episodes, like, I'll still have the secondary, like, podcast set up for multiple people, but it'll mm -hmm. actually be in the studio room still with the computer and stuff. So we oh, won't be in, nice. like, a completely different part of the house. So if something goes wrong, you'll be able to see it like, as it happens. Exactly. Kind of yep. Yeah. So, you know, listeners, I've been busy and not getting that much sleep, so... That's what you got to look forward to this episode. <laughs> Sleep deprived Randy. Well, and we've, we've been doing a really good job of uh, getting new videos up every week. And so like, uh, I tried to, uh, I tried to jump in and, and keep that streak alive. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> with a, uh, with a live video on Facebook live. Uh, but I've never done that before and it's way different to, uh, kind of talk to yourself live <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's basically like talking to yourself except people can watch you now <laughs> yeah, people are watching you talk to yourself while you're doing it that's uh, for, it doesn't sound different but it is <laughs> i mean the whole thing is like when you're recording videos or even still like podcasting stuff like uh, unfortunately we we co-host this so like we're always talking to each other but right. when you're recording videos like you are essentially talking to yourself. I mean, you're talking to the audience, but it's hard to get out of the mindset of like, I'm still just sitting here talking to an inanimate object. Well, especially when they're not, um, when they're not interacting, like if you were getting like comments or whatnot, you could go, Oh, okay. I can react at that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're just like, you know, if you're like rambling to pat it to see if they're going to, or whatever, or just like, I don't know. It's like, uh, it's like at work when your supervisor comes in and is watching you and you don't know if they're watching you for performance review or if, you, if they're just watching to see how you do things or if they're waiting for you to have a lull so they can tell you something. It's, it's like, I don't know what to do here. Do I stop what I'm doing and talk to you or do I just keep doing what I'm doing? That whole like observed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which I've never done before. You know, like I've, I've always 
um, recorded them and then posted them. And there's all that opportunity to edit anything that's awkward, <laughs> but not with live. I think I, I, it came across really well though. I watched it. I, when, when I noticed it, when uh, I got a notification on my phone that, you know, cause Facebook's pretty good about, they're still kind of pushing the live video. So they're pretty good about right. actually notifying your followers when you're live. Um, so I got the notification. So I, I checked it out, but I was at work, so I didn't get to really watch it very long. But uh, I watched it last night, and yeah, no, you you did good, for sure. I, I And that was kind of my uh, thought process behind it was like, you know, uh, I know that they do a pretty good job of putting that out there because I'm always getting notifications about one of the pages that I like uh, going live. And I thought, well, that'd be nice to give it a shot, you know. And I'd done it with a, with a different organization. But I wasn't talking. Someone else was talking and I was just recording it live. So I get to play cameraman on that instead. So what's this? Co- what's this? What's this about? Oh, Comic-Con? <laughs> As if there's a segue. To- <laughs> <laughs> so so what are you what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so oh, Comic-Con. I can't even talk. I like how you say Oh, Comic-Con. <laughs> Oh, Comic-Con. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Comic-Con. Oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Now I've got a chainsaw happening next door. Oh, really? I don't even hear I mean, it. Okay. I, well, they stopped. So maybe. Oh. Maybe maybe we won't have chainsaw children this time. <laughs> um, okay. So, oh, Comic-Con is coming up. Uh, it's the weekend. I have a, Now I have children. What is going on in my neighborhood? Chainsaw and ch- <laughs> Wow. You got a bolt this time. Yeah, I've got a kid like running down the sidewalk yelling. It's that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, so Okamicon is uh, coming up on. Uh, it would be this. I don't know if it's the second weekend in July. It's uh, July seventh, eighth, and ninth. It's at the Mid America Center in uh, Council Bluffs, and uh, Axton and I will be tabling as usual at the Tank Zombie Studios. Uh, table and uh as always you know you can come and uh and chat uh Grolix podcast all things Grolix podcast with me or you can uh you know just come and say hi and uh there's some pretty cool uh media guests this year uh this year they have the biggest name is uh Ray Park he's the big name for sure so Darth Maul um Toad from the X-Men series yeah. Nice. Um, so he'll, he'll be there. Um, then there's some other, I mean, like there's, there's celebrities from kind of all over the place. Um, we've got someone from Buffy. Um, we've got somebody from, was it the little kid from J- uh, Jerry Maguire oh. is, is going to be there. Jonathan Lipnicki. And that's basically oh, what? what, that's basically what I know him from from is uh he's that kid that's like did you know that bees and dogs can smell fear (laughs) (laughs) really (laughs) yeah that kid will be there okay Um, (laughs) you got the uh voice actor of uh uh courage the cowardly dog and uh the voice actor rob paulson who's done like everything he's yakko warner from the animaniacs he's pinky from pinky in the brain which is basically the same show, but um, <laughs> he's he's also Raffy. He was the original 1980s Raphael in in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which Ooh. is a tie-in to what we're going to be talking about on next uh, on the next Grolix podcast show, where uh, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as our poll list pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that discussion too, and. Uh... Whoever added it to the poll, which you could add a comic yourself to our poll list poll and uh, you can dictate the show. Tell us what to read. Yeah. Uh, Grogspodcast.com. It's on there. Click the poll list tab or uh, if you're on desktop, it's right on the homepage along the right hand side. But whoever added it was vague and just said TMNT. So we are going to we're going to we're going to go right to the beginning. Yeah, we're bringing it back. We're going old school and talk about issues one through three. Of the original, the original run, very first. Back in my back in my day, if you had a Ninja Turtle, you had to walk uphill both ways to school in the snow with your ninjas and your mutants. There's a lot of the oh, comic. There's some interesting guests. <laughs> there, there is. Yeah, Big Bird. 
and Oscar the Grouch yeah. is going to be there. Yeah, and then the Blue Power Ranger. I mean, <laughs> we're kind of circling back a little bit, but yeah, there's some pretty in- interesting and uh, like some strange variety there. But it's uh, it's fun, you know. Like I really enjoy this con because it feels. Uh, you know, I, I actually talked about this in that Facebook live that I did recently where it's uh, it's kind of still got that grassroots feel to it where the guests are just like they're there and they're awesome, but they're all over the place. And so I feel like if you're a fan of one, it doesn't mean that you're going to spend all your money on the celebrity guests. You know, like if you come and you're a Power Ranger fan, you're probably going to stop and meet David Yost. And then you're going to circle through the con, you know, if you really want to meet like the voice of uh, big bird, you're going to meet the voice of big bird. And then you're probably going to wander through the con. You're like, you're not just super saturating on one fandom. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I I'm, I'm always excited about it and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it this year. And uh, there's a few guests I'm going to have to meet um, because yeah, power Rangers, come on. And Darth Maul. I mean, the between uh Darth Maul, Yakko Warner and the Blue Power Ranger I'm going to have a hard time saying no. I was I was looking through the news and whatnot at things that we maybe uh could hit on this for on this first monthly episode and uh the one that really stuck out uh was we talked about the whole changeover in the Justice League um, situation. Uh-huh. And we kind of, we kind of hypothesized, we, we theorized that, uh, just because Joss Whedon was on board didn't mean that there would be any kind of changes. And then like it hit the news that, uh, Joss Whedon is making significant reshoots, not just pickups. Like they're like, uh, pretty extensive apparently. Wow. Really? So he's, he's, he's shaking it up apparently like his, uh, his touch will be seen and felt wow on this movie i'm kind of surprised because i mean i don't know i'm i am and i'm not but i'm kind of surprised because depending how far along the project is of course he's doing reshoots so it doesn't really matter how far along it was a lot of people would come in and be like okay well i need to finish this as it was intended right but, but then again joss whedon's joss whedon and he's got a name and like kind of a you know of course, he's got an name. expectation exactly that goes along with his yeah. And if he's going to be attached to it, then I yeah I could see him totally wanting to be like no we're, we're going to make this mine or at least make my uh, influence felt. Um, well, that's kind of promising then because right beforehand I was like well what does that really mean? And we're probably still getting Zack Snyder's Justice League, but if we're going to get like I don't know. Hopefully it's not a mess, but if we're getting Joss Whedon's Justice League um, with, right. with with Zack Snyder flourishes, that might be okay. Right, right, exactly. Well, kind of like uh, what well, Ant-Man turned out okay, and, you know, like they've changed directors. So, I don't know. We'll see. But I just thought that was interesting because we did we did point it out and we we did kind of make our predictions and we may have been totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we were wrong well, about weird. a future prediction <laughs> that's <No>. weird <laughs> that doesn't happen no, no. <laughs> all right the main event <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good all announcer on me that's that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh michael buffer action happening michael i was, buffer. I was about I was, I was ready to rumble What's that guy been up to? Let's is that guy, get ready is that guy to still rumble. around? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Man, I haven't watched boxing for a long time, but it's... Yeah. I guess that's where he'd be, huh? I, I would assume so, but, you know, I mean, like, if the boxing dried up for him, he could go anywhere. Like, how many other ring announcers do you know by name? Right, right. <laughs> well, was there was uh, Bruce Buffer for a long time. Who did he... Did he work for WWE? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he was, he was no Michael Buffer. He was poor man's Michael Buffer. The poor man's um, Michael Buffer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he sounded fine, but he almost, it's almost like was, he had a slight lisp or something. I don't know. Was it, Let's prepare to like some slight <laughs> off knockoff race. <laughs> Let's prepare for fisticuffs. <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah, that's fun, but I don't feel like it carries the same way. <laughs> hey, Bruce, could you just could you amp it up just a bit? Just a bit. I mean, fisticuffs. I mean, let's, we'll, we'll get you a thesaurus. You can Google. You can Google other words. I mean, I get you're not trying to do the same thing, but yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so uh, in this corner, what, what do we got? What we got, Randy? Uh, in, <laughs> in this corner, we have Batman issues number twenty-one and twenty-two. And Ooh. in the other corner, we have the Flash issues in number twenty-one trunks. and twenty. In the red trunks, right? <laughs> <laughs> the very, very black trunks. We have Batman. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, the button crossover between the Flash and Batman issues number twenty-one and twenty-two for both 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 series. Um, Let's see, art by Howard Porter and Jason Fabuk, written by Tom King and Joshua Williamson in their respective books. Okay, I was going to ask you, who wrote Batman? Because I have some questions about Batman. <laughs> Tom King was writing Batman, so Joshua All Williams right. was writing uh, Flash. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised by that, actually, because you know a lot of times you'll get uh, crossovers like that where they have Man, I'm I'm hoping this information is complete where they'll have another writer, you know, like sure, like an event that. person like Jeff Johns steps in for the event or whatever. Exactly. And I believe Tom King wrote through it. I, I believe they each, you know, wrote through their respective parts. So the guys that are currently on the books. Cool. So it's so like all crossovers start, all good crossovers have to start with hockey, right? <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That, yeah, that was so strange. I was like, wait, what's this now? Not just hockey, but the, the inmates of Arkham Asylum watching hockey. Was that the bit with the, like, somebody had, like, some type of premonition? Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, there's, and um, what is her name? She's got a name. She's a notable character. Saturn Girl or something? She's oh like, yeah, that's right. Because she gets shoved in there as a result of uh, rebirth. So yeah, this is a follow up to rebirth. <laughs> yeah, like eleven months ago. Remember that thing? That whole yeah, yeah. Back back in J- July of twenty sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> we're finally seeing some forward momentum on that. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, sort of. I mean, I guess maybe not. We, they <laughs> they mentioned that they still have the button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Less momentum, more like. Uh, a st- crawling we have forward crawling <laughs> yeah yeah but through the speed force oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> crawling through the speed force on a treadmill yeah so this is this is crazy i think you've read it more recently this this isn't that old but it's what we're maybe a month month maybe a month and a half removed yeah yeah so it starts with hockey and and somebody kills somebody on the ice or something and that's what trips her like premonition and that's really like doesn't that doesn't really have bearing on the immediate story though does it it's just no not really some like strange it's uh, like the chain of events it's like that's it i don't know it's like being from the future it's probably what she's like oh no it's happening now <laughs> kind of thing yeah and so batman is still like he's looking into the button which is obviously the, the comedian's button or from Watchmen that bamfed in from who knows where during rebirth and they show it like he's got it on like pretty much every screen of the uh of the back computer is like really bruce really yeah i thought that was a little <laughs> funky too i was like that seems unnecessary all that and hockey <laughs> i feel like i feel like somebody really just wanted to shoehorn some hockey into these but, but. Well, and this, and having those on every screen, having uh, various angles of the button on every screen, Batman, I think, does a lot of things thinking, this will look cool if somebody happens to walk in. <laughs> he's, he's, so this, so Tom King's Batman is essentially uh, Lego Batman. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Basically, reverse Flash, does he, he just like shows up, right? He just like... Well, I mean, there. first he's uh he's got Psycho Pirate's mask dangerously close to this button, and and there's like this crazy reaction that happens. 
when 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 they interact and he basically sees a premonition of his father from flashpoint oh that's right yeah yeah and so that's where bruce is like hey flash something happened (laughs) or i'm tripping and flash is like okay i'll be there uh but i gotta finish up this thing i'm doing like he's in the middle of a a battle (laughs) with some kind of samurai yeah androids and he's like no no it'll literally be like a minute and uh so batman's just like okay okay i'll wait (laughs) <laughs> and then uh you know like when he expects when he expects uh the flash to show up it, you know, like he, he expects it to be longer than a minute because barry's never you know he's never early and that's when that's when enter the reverse flash and i really like yeah so the reverse flash comes in and uh, i don't remember what leads into the fight but ends up kicking the crap out of batman and i really like the sequence this seems very much like this is kind of the kind of flair that I've been enjoying in uh Tom King's run on Batman so far. He'll mm-hmm. do interesting sequences like this. There's something not exactly like this, but similar in uh his recent like Bane story. But yeah, you you get like each panel's like is it each second almost yeah. and and of course, you know, rever- Eobard is a uh, kicking the crap out of Batman in high speed. So each second is like something very different is going on. But yeah, I thought this was a super was cool like sequence. four, four panels of one second. Yeah. <laughs> like him, him just knocking Batman four times in in a second. And I liked the art there too. I just liked how it, yeah, I liked the panel layout. I just liked how this whole bit was done. I thought it was kind of cool. And Batman's just basically like counting down in his head keeping like waiting for the other flash to show up because he's kind of outclassed at this point like an on unhinged uh, uh speedster yeah batman with no prep time batman doesn't have a lot a lot of uh a lot of stuff he could do well and then uh you know like he's got him kind of just uh basically just in the fetal position almost and then he uh happens upon the flashpoint note uh, you're like he's like well i got time to kill why don't i just like totally demoralize you <laughs> kind of thing i mean this was some pretty classic reverse flash uh-huh. if you ask me uh, at least this opening was and so he's he's reading this he's reading the flashpoint note and uh he remembers it uh because he was there uh because he's kind of an aberration at this point isn't he yeah yeah i mean this is i don't know if they've had have did new 52 did they do some like, uh, did they do any Eobard stuff? See, I don't know. I, Cause I would he's, think they would, but, uh, I mean, apparently not. Apparently this is pre-noon 52. This is at least Flashpoint. Yeah, because this, Flash. yeah, exactly. This is definitely that reverse Flash. Oh, yeah, because he's name-dropping Thomas, Wayne, and everything. Mm-hmm. And then, so then he just shreds this thing while while Bruce watches. Just shreds the letter right in front of him. He has this whole like showdown with him where where Ebard is kind of doing his whole supervillain demoralization uh, monologuing kind of thing, and then Batman like stabs him in the foot, kind of oh, thing. Yeah, and he's yeah. he's like, "What are you doing? You know, like, there's no way you can survive." And he's like, "I don't need to. I just need to make it 11 seconds." And uh, and then of course uh, Barry is late as usual. Uh huh. Yep. And then yeah, he uh, he gets the. He gets the button and he, yeah, he just zaps out. Like, I don't think he even had anything to do with it. He picks it up, says, uh, now what is the mystery of you? And then blows out the computer screen. Or I guess that happened in the fight, but like, he's just gone for a second. And then when he comes back, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's all kinds of messed up. And he, he says something. God, I saw God, and he just kind of melts. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, he's <laughs> right uh, there in the middle of the Batcave. Very skeletal. Well, and we don't have to go point by point through the whole thing, but like this opening is pretty specific stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because after this, it kind of starts to get uh just all over. It just kind of starts bouncing all over the place. Yeah, not like the plot bounces all over. It's just what's happening is like oh, okay. It's just a series of like. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, well, this happened, then this happens, then this happens. 
it's linear, but it does bounce. You know? <laughs> and Flash, I believe then the next issue is Flash 21. Batman rests for what? Like <laughs> in typical <laughs> Batman fashion. And I swear this just happened in that Bane story I mentioned that like I think preceded this story in Batman where he was just like fractured skull, just beaten to a pulp where it's like, it's going to take weeks to heal. And he sleeps like four hours. It's like, no, I need to get up and do this. <laughs> I got to like, go. And then for the most part, he's fine the rest of the story. But <laughs> yeah, it's one of those deals where he's just battered until he decides I'm not, I'm not going to lay in bed. And- it kind of tonal shifts. I mean, it's, it's obvious that it's still the same story, but it's also obvious that we've got a different writer because like, it jumps right into Barry doing his whole CSI thing. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like laying out the the crime scene and everything. But even before that, like we get it, – it's, it's funny because they're just like sprinkling little nuggets of the Rebirth stuff in here because it opens with Johnny Thunder again. And so he's like up on top of the roof of the, uh, of the nursing home where he's at because he's like geriatric uh, Johnny Thunder. And he's trying to call the Thunder. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then, you know, the attendees come and just pull them down off the roof because nothing's happening. The only thing that makes that m- remarkable at all is that it's the first we've seen of Johnny Thunder since Rebirth <laughs> when uh, Wally came to him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then they go to the watchtower and they have a room of like, I guess, mysterious objects and random things. The hall yeah, of lost the hall and of found. lost and found. Yep. Yeah. And so that's pretty cool. You get Ted Cord's beetle ride. Mhm. <laughs> Some crazy stuff in there. Uh, and they also have the uh cosmic treadmill. Oh yeah, that's right. That's where they get it. Some serious throwback there. <laughs> Cuz I don't think they use the cosmic treadmill at all in the new 52. Yeah, I don't think so either. It's kind of interesting because I want to say Flash is also kind of has some memories from pre New Fifty Two stuff. Then, well, it make it kind of makes sense because he was the first to come in contact with Wally and to uh, reestablish those New Fifty Two memories. And in fact, he has a little flashback to when he found, like, he came in contact with Wally in Rebirth, and uh, that's what kind of brings him here. And. Uh, so you get this little showdown. It's this is where it kind of gets weird. Um, is this first part for me? It's like we've got a very logical. It, it feels like it feels like we got a very logical and not. I wouldn't even say very humorous flash. Like Barry is just all business, and uh, it feels like uh, Batman is leading with his heart in this whole thing. Like he's like, uh, I saw the ghost of my dad. I'm coming. Period. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like no matter how no matter how little sense this makes, uh, I'm on, I'm I'm on this one. Yeah, and he's like limping limping in there, and uh, what is he attaches this like little gr- bat grappling hook thing to the top yes. of the treadmill? It's like, yep, I'm going with you. <laughs> you're gonna yep, he just like tag along, here. plug and play. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because they can follow the radiation. What is it? The radiation from uh, the button. The button's radiation. You can track oh, yeah. it with a cro- cosmic treadmill or some business. So, yeah, Batman hops on and they they uh, go into <laughs> what? I mean, speed well, they're basic, force? Basically but, in the speed force, yeah. yeah. But they start to see uh, they start to see those flash flashbacks into uh, realities that were. And uh, so Batman's like, what are these alternate realities? And uh, and Barry's like, well, these are the years that were taken from us. Yeah. So yeah. they they kind of flash through uh, like crisis. They kind of uh, flash through um, the whole identity crisis thing that happened. Mm-hmm. And I know it's I know it's super fan wink thing of them to do, but man, it kind of works because I love it when they throw the flashes of these old. Oh, stories. sure. Yeah. Man, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. When then basically they wreck, the, they basically wreck the uh, cosmic treadmill uh, as they're trying to follow this thing. And that's where they crash land in Flashpoint. Yeah. Into uh, 
uh, old Bat Dad's cave. And and Bruce thinks it's like the cave, like early on in his career. Mm-hmm. He doesn't he doesn't understand at first. And then Bat Dad shows up. <laughs> Bat Bat Dad. And that's Thomas the, Wayne. That's the end of that issue, huh? Yep. 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 A lot, of, a lot of little cliffhangers in this little four issue crossover, yeah, including the ultimate conclusion. <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt. Yeah, they, I guess we'll get to it. But they're even like, well, uh, does that mean anything? I hope this uh, adds up to something. Yeah, yeah. So then we go to Batman number twenty two, and uh, we get we get a little bit of. I, I mean, I guess this is good because it's kind of. Um, new reader friendly well new reader friendly but it's 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 good for people not familiar with flashpoint and the whole bat dad thing we get a little bit of a flashback i guess because i mean at this point like the flashpoint universe was like destroyed at the end of flashpoint i guess but (laughs) yeah yeah according to this it didn't like it was supposed to but then it didn't because so there's like something holding it together for whatever reason which stands to reason because then why would uh, artifacts like that letter from from Thomas still exist you know like that was always my confusion with the fact that that letter was even there it was like if the, if it's gone if it never happened then why do you have a letter that's a good point i never really questioned it because like it paradox i was just like well they just probably didn't even think about it that hard but you're right i mean if if you're going with the multiversal approach then yeah okay it could still exist but uh if it's a time aberration if it's just disappeared then everything would have disappeared i would think we don't get a lot of bruce thomas wayne discussion no they're they're both kind of weird uh, they're just i don't know skeptical obviously but then by the time they're kind of like well maybe this is real then they're getting attacked by some people. Cause, cause why would we have some, uh, father son bonding? <laughs> you can't do From that. Two, two people that have been, uh, obviously traumatized by the loss of each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't do that because then neither character would have any more motivation to be Batman. True. Um, no, it is a little disappointing though. And I want to say during, what was the name of that event? Where they finally, it's almost they kind of started to set up this rebirth stuff where they pretty much brought back the idea of the multiversity into the new 52 and like cemented the, all that other stuff did exist. Um, oh, convergence, right? Convergence. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. I want to say they had bat flashpoint bat dad. Maybe I'm pretty sure it was flashpoint bat dad met Bruce Wayne pre new 52 Bruce Wayne. Whereas now we're obviously talking about. Uh, current Bruce Wayne. And I think they killed Bat Dad in that too. So like I was a little <laughs> I was like, uh, do they not know you guys already killed him? But whatever. It's all right. None of this none of so this. They've kind, so they've kind of killed him three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. You, even now, who knows? He disappeared into light again. So, you know, whatever. No, oh, yeah, true. I th- and uh, is it discussed here? It was kind of interesting because like he knew these people were coming to attack and he was kind of setting up. Is that this issue? Maybe that's next issue. No, I think so. Cause I think they just totally leave this behind after this issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, they were, they were kind of setting up that he basically had the cave rig to blow and he was just going to, uh, wait till whoever these enemies were to show up and then suicide bomb everybody. And, but, yeah, uh, and so this has kind of changed things and they've got to fix the, uh, They've got to fix the cosmic treadmill so they can get out of there. Mm -hmm. And even at the end, when like the light is tearing everything apart or whatever, it's disintegrating. He decides against it, and he's like, you know, we rise. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah. When and this is where I'm like, would Batman really do this? Where he's like begging his father to come with him. Like you're you're a grandfather. I have a son. Come with me. (laughs) <laughs> and and Barry's like, dude, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce handles this really oddly. Uh, Bat Dad handles it like I would imagine, but yeah, Bruce. 
you know, whatever though. He was he was the orphan child. <laughs> by so trauma, I guess- by by traumatizing Bruce and being like, "Don't be Batman." <laughs> <laughs> Make, making Bruce Wayne totally uh, question his mission in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some it. interesting. There's some interesting fallout uh, with this little event. I think. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, I uh, that was that was the thing where I was like, I don't know if I'm buying into this because uh, that doesn't feel like Batman. Like Batman would be the first person to be like Barry, get your head out of your butt, uh, and then get your head in the game. You, you, you're putting us all at risk, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, whoa, is, is Batman, uh, is Batman making the risky plays here? I think we got a little bit of a, we got the comic book version of, oh, why did you say that name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tom, totally. Thomas. <laughs> this was a different kind of breaking of the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, in the end, it is kind of brutal because it's, it's. It's a tease. It's like, hey, here's here's your dad, or at least you know a version of your dad. Uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. You don't get him. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why are you so mean to Batman all the time? <laughs> Come on, DC, Dan to Dio, knock it off. So then, uh, Batman and Flash are back on the tr- treadmill and uh, back into the Speed Force, and then they come across uh, Reverse Flash, and that's the end of that issue. Yep, wacky racers. Uh, wacky racers (laughs) wacky racers that's what it is (laughs) we're back to wacky racers all right oh man i haven't read that i haven't read batman 23 yet i'm kind of behind but that we got some swamp thing in batman 23 oh i need to read that but all right final issue of this button thing uh (laughs) flash number 22 there's a there's a variant cover of this which is actually pretty cool. It's like uh you got like Jay Garrick looking flash. Yes, that's rad. And it's like actually basically both black and cover, white. Yeah, yeah both, both covers are awesome. Yeah, you got the black and white with the like the yeah, the yellow highlights and stuff. It's very pencil looking. And then there's a I'm assuming a variant where it's like a old type flash co- cover, but then of course you've got like a cool looking Jay Garrick in the middle like burning up like, in the covers the old covers burning i don't know it's, it's kind of interesting yeah 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 so yeah spoilers guys <laughs> i wonder who's gonna show up in this uh, issue <laughs> like like why would you throw that on the cover yeah man? they put it right on front street that's that's tor- that's terrible <laughs> oh way to <laughs> way to bury the lead you're not bur- <laughs> opposite of burying the lead yeah you Barry Allen, the lead. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I didn't know how to make it work. <laughs> I would argue that made it better. <laughs> Barry Allen, the lead. Woo. Woo. Oh, oh, what's this? That's a preview for an issue that hadn't came out yet. That's probably out now, and it's a little spoilery too. Okay. Um. So they're chasing after Reverse Flash. And then there's a, and he's got the button in his hand and they're trying to like, you know, talk sense into him and be like, dude, you're going to die. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's a, and he's kind of monologuing this whole thing. Like he opens it. Like, it seems like every issue, someone is like the, like you're hearing their thoughts kind of thing. The first issue was probably Batman. I don't know. I think so. And then the next issue was Barry Allen. And then the third issue was Bat Dad. And now this one's opening with Ebert Thon's kind of thought process. I mean, it's just I just the thing I noticed. Well, thinking about these like just now, I kind of like because sometimes a crossover will come like you'll come across a crossover while you're reading a series and you're like, it's obviously like, well, this totally derailed my series. Like it could be like. Where you're reading The Flash and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, this is suddenly a Batman book. But I kind of appreciate that the individual issues for this, you got the first issue, which is pretty much in the Batcave. Um, that whole sequence with Reverse Flash beating up Batman. It's very much a Batman book. Mm-hmm. And then the next issue, you've got um, the cosmic treadmill and, and, you know, going into the Speed Force and all that. So you've got a Flash book and then you've got a, a visit to... Uh, bat dad and you've got that whole thing and now we're back into the speed force like i kind of like how it's one story but 
it's like the Batman books still feel like Batman stories and the Flash books still dealing with Flash stuff. Like I kind of like that separation there. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I guess it helps when you have the writer of the current series write each individual part, but sometimes that can be weird too. But right. I, I think it kind of works here. Kakoom. Yeah, it was it's uh, so weird like uh you see him and he find he, like Ebert Thon basically catches up with with what's going to happen kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh he he shows up and he's just basically getting blasted or something. And uh like the button like shoots off into nowhere. And uh and then like we don't know what's going on there and then boom, we've got uh Jay Garrick. Yeah. Like, Looking epic and I'm like awesome and whatnot and saves them and but it's kind of anticlimactic for what's gonna happen to uh, Reverse Flash because it all kind of happens off screen a little bit not really like we see the result the other two well it's still that very vague like you got the there's the blue light and stuff but the other two do they witness it no they hear him they hear him scream but they don't witness it. And even like where Reverse Flash ends up, it's a very nondescript place. It's just kind of like, because he just like, I don't know, goes off to some place where there's, it looks like one of those places where it's space and there's like floating platforms that you can stand on, like a, yeah. a earthy, what is it, a stone platforms or something. And then, yeah, he, I don't know, he's talking to himself and... And then he's like calling whoever it is out. He's like, show yourself. And then and he's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why all of a sudden he thinks he's going to die. But he's just like, well, wait, wait, wait. I didn't know. Please. I don't want to. And then he dies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you're right, though. It is kind of like, oh, okay. Well, it's just so vague. And it's like, we've seen this. Like, it's exactly what we saw in, I think, the rebirth one shot i can't remember who it was that got killed though um but it's just you know blue light and they see somebody like oh and then they like oh, do the uh, blue was it Pan- pandora yeah i think so yeah so i mean i guess you know whatever it's establishing that's the mo but like we've already seen it and it's disappointing that when we get to the like well what happened to the reverse flash that it's like oh okay well I mean, I guess that's what happened to him. <laughs> and so then that begs the question is, is he dead, dead? You know, I mean, like you never know with him because he tends to come back when you think oh, yeah. he's gone. But it's like, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I have a hard time believing that he's gone, but I guess I'm supposed to believe that he's just dead now. Right. Like we just saw the end of reverse flash. I guess in theory, so. in theory. Yeah. Again, <laughs> Again, unbelievable. You know, like I don't really believe it, but yeah, I wouldn't believe it either. Especially since that promo I was page that I was muttering to myself, uh, was about reverse flash. Oh, <laughs> of course. Beginning of, course. of this, it was like for flash number 25 or something. And it was something about, he destroyed Barry's past. Now he's going to destroy his future. Oh, so surprise, I was like, surprise. Yeah. Wow. I was like, Oh, that's kind of spoilery considering we're killing him in the issue. What we're reading. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even in the TV show, it's like, yeah, he's dead, but not right, right. And he is again, but probably not. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Then, uh, Jay Garrick says, I'm free. And he pops out. Of. Well, and he's, he basically, he's got to get, uh, Barry to, to like, say my name, <laughs> just say my name and it can help you. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is actually kind of a bummer because it, it doesn't work. Right. Like he does. Yeah, the whole, no, he the doesn't way, recognize Jay at all. The way Wally came back was, you know, trying to plead to him to remember him and Barry eventually remembered. And it seems like it's going to go th- that way, but then it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It looks yeah, very no. painful. <laughs> what happens to Jay Garrett? I'm assuming it just gets pulled back into the speed force or wherever they're trapped. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, it looks a lot more painful. It looks like he's melting away or whatever. Yeah. I did like the, the call back to being, you know, or I wasn't the lightning rod he needed. Yeah. I'm, you know, like my theory is that it would be Wally. Wally would be the one that would remember Jay mm-hmm. because when uh, Barry Allen was gone, that's who mentored him. Which is what I've been kind of 
hoping will happen with the next uh, season of Flash on the CW, but I I doubt that he'll be gone very long. Five I'm pessimistic about t- it. Ten minutes, a full episode. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Or it'll be like six months later, he's back. Uh, we're gonna tell you in flashback what happened to him. But to be fair, the show does uh, does surprise me. I mean. That's that's what I've always enjoyed about the show is that it tends to surprise me. I just worry because it feels like it's gotten more formulaic as time has gone on. I hope in them saying, again, we're kind of off topic, but I hope in the showrunner saying they're not going to have another speedster as the big bad this next season. I think that I hope that's them realizing like we're kind of just doing the same thing, like realizing it's being formulaic. So but who knows? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess getting us back on track, they basically, they're back, they're back at their uh, normal timeline and they're, I mean, like they kind of sit rap a little bit and uh, like they're in the graveyard and whatnot. And and then we just kind of flash to uh, like Bruce kind of processing uh, what his father told him in, in Flashpoint and, uh, and then it just fades into the ending. <laughs> yeah, I want to touch on that that page, that Batman page for a moment. Because, yeah, I kind of really like that. It's because he's thinking about it and he's like, almost seems like he's contemplating not answering the bat s- signal. Yeah. And then when Alfred's like, are you going to answer that? And uh, he kind of looks bummed about it. So, yeah, I don't know. I just liked, I like the interesting little, even though we said Bruce is, kind of acting weird this oh i i issue. think at this point it it's warranted uh-huh i suppose i mean it's it's just like earlier on when he's making these decisions about an alternate reality dad where i'm like what yeah this is a man you don't know you d- you didn't know this man you know but you're willing to uh <laughs> break some big time cosmic rules here yeah and then we get the uh still vague but even a little bit more of a glimpse of, of Watchmen stuff. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> I wonder who that blue hand is. Yeah, so we actually, so there's the button and blue light, but we actually get the blue hand. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get some Watchmen quotes, too. Like, we get straight up blue dialogue boxes of... Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. Why does dialogue. my perception of time distress you? I, and it's a little, you know, again, it's appealing to the like fan excitement of like, ooh, Watchmen quotes. But then it's also like, but why? Like, no, and like here it doesn't work. When, when they do the DC stuff where it's like, look at these glimpses of other realities or time that was stolen from us or whatever, like that's exciting. But here it's just still feels weird. It's like, well, and then and then they go, then they double down on the weirdness. <laughs> At least I think so with their crazy epilogue, <laughs> which is just yeah, it's just a button. It's just a floating button, just floating in space. And uh, apparently now the blood is just going to fly right off the button, uh-huh. the blood that's been there forever and has even survived intact through time travel in the speed force. But now as it's floating in space, the blood is going to like come up off of the button. And then we and get sorry, go morph ahead. into a Superman shield. Yeah. Not even Superman <laughs> like, shield. It's Superman's chest. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, so what does that mean? Like, is the blood Superman now? <laughs> what, what happened here? Yeah, and then we get the doomsday clock. Like we close it out with the doomsday clock with the <laughs> with the <laughs> Superman S as the midnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God, November. <clears throat> so November 2017. So yeah, they're gonna. Oh yeah. So they're totally okay. So before we were recorded this episode, I was looking at when they're because they're gonna release this crossover four issues as like a deluxe hardback book. Um, but not till October. And I was like, man, DC waits forever. Then I was like, oh, wait, I bet that's about when this whole they're going to ignore this whole like Watchmen thing until about then when it shows up in Superman, yeah. which is November. So, yeah, that. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally. I mean, not, but it does. 
This is such a weird way to handle a thing. I mean, I guess it's, I don't know. It's just weird to like, we're going to touch on it and then wait uh, a year, half a year and then touch on it again. And I wonder how long they're going to like drag this out. <laughs> I don't know. It's already been a year and nothing's happened. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> in, yeah. maybe, maybe at the end of this year, we'll get, we'll get a, a blue elbow. <laughs> this year, they literally gave us the finger. The <laughs> fingers. <laughs> That's Listen, what they gave us. Are we going to get... <laughs> Never mind. I'll backtrack, backpedal on that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yep, I do, I do. <laughs> I was trying to think of how to go there, too, but nope. DC, are you going to go full Monty, or are you going to gonna cop out, huh? <laughs> yeah. You bring in Watchmen, you got to bring in all of it. <laughs> right, right. Come on. <laughs> Don't just give us the finger. <laughs> I like this story because well, in the end it's it's disappointing because even the characters are like, what does it mean? What is it? And you know, the well, I don't know. They, there's no answers to anything. But I liked the journey. I liked Batman and Flash flying through uh, the speed force and the other realities and bat dad is always fun and kind of unlikely allies too. You know, like you're used to seeing like green lantern and the flash team up, but like the flash and Batman are just their unusual pair. I would really like to see, I don't know. This is kind of, it's not super emotional, but like they're very driven in this. Like they have this very specific, like they're going to do this and then bat dad's there. So Batman's all kind of messed up about that. So they don't really get it. Like we don't necessarily get buddy cop type story, but I would like to see more of that. I think that'd be kind of cool because sure. It's very much a, like Batman's the straight man and you know, flash is kind of like, uh, what, what's the, okay. So what's the term for the guy? That's not the straight man. Comedic foil. Yeah, yeah. Or comedic relief, I guess. I, I think that could make for some fun stories. And it, Batman seems to res always seems to respect Flash, you know. Well, it's interesting because they did play on their similarities in this, you know, especially in that first issue of The Flash where they basically break down like, no, uh, you know, Barry Allen is a detective for all intents and purposes. He's very methodical and it's all evidence-based. And they kind of come... Not that from not that most superheroes don't come from this kind of backstory, but their motivation kind of comes from the same place. Mm -hmm. they're, ba they're, yeah. they're orphaned, basically. Yeah, and they even kind of highlighted that, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. How two different they, they took two different approaches to essentially a very similar tragedy. And I'm sure there's probably been easily a hundred Batman Flash stories like that, but yeah, I can't recall re re reading too much. Um, at least not recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I like I enjoyed this reading it, but then at the end it's it's like uh okay. I don't it doesn't yeah, yeah. It doesn't really it's, do anything. It doesn't it's progress both, us. It's both well written and unsatisfying yeah. <laughs> somehow. It, yeah. It doesn't progress this overarching watchman tie in narrative at all. It's just it seems like a thing I would see on the shelf and I go, oh, I got to have this. And then I would read it and I go, I didn't need to have that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, again, we're a little behind the curve on this, but it's 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 interesting still like just I don't know. I guess it depends where they go with this whole Watchmen thing, but it's still an interesting idea that i feel very conflicted about them bringing it into the dc universe proper to begin with right. um it's still super crappy man it's still such a crappy thing to do to, to yeah. do to oh, alan yeah. oh for sure which they 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 have no problems being crappy to him oh no for what for whatever reason i don't know yeah no doubt like burning bridges maybe they're just like well that's a bridge that's never going to get rebuilt so let's just go all the way <laughs> Let's just crap all over a legend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds like, that always sounds like a good way to do business. I mean, granted, he he is an oddball. I'll, I'll give him that. I mean, like he he does have some like extreme reactions to things that just like okay, now just take a chill pill. But yeah, yeah, he does yeah. kind of seem like the kind of guy that's it's maybe not that hard to get on his bad side, and once you're there, that's where you're gonna stay. But still. Yeah. 
dude's made you infinite amount of money that you're going to keep taking to the bank. I don't know why. I don't know why you got to like thumb your nose at him. I mean, you're doing it right now. You're taking it to the bank and it just the crappiest way. I mean, because and not that it's necessarily anybody's fault that's running DC now or calling shots now. Maybe it is, but it seems unlikely that it would be. But to make a big deal and like cash in on like we're bringing the Watchmen characters into the DC universe when they should have been DC characters to begin with. Uh, yeah, yeah, and DC was t- too scared to let him do that with their characters. Yep, <laughs> hey, there, there it is. Well, that's listen, how we feel. I hope you're <laughs> as uh, slightly confused and unsatisfied as we were with this. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, yep. Uh, oh man. Uh, oh, this is something I should have done at the beginning of the show, but it just popped in my head now. Just a random shout out to the Superior Comic Show guys because uh, they've reemerged and been very active on Twitter, and they uh, said some nice things about uh, one of our recent episodes. And who else? Yeah. Oh, of course, Patrick from Make Dad Read Comics said some super nice things about our Pepe the Frog talk, and got some- yeah, that, that really resonated with people. I, uh, <laughs> I I need to go back and listen to that episode because I don't <laughs> I don't know what was so. Uh, out, out of the ordinary about my comments, but they apparently resonated. <laughs> I think of that episode, uh, the Pepe discussion, I think was definitely the the highlight <laughs> of the episode, <laughs> which is so bizarre to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, the, what did we discuss? Kingdom come. And we kind of, I guess a little bit like we did this episode, that review is not, it's not the worst. I think we've had harder times reviewing other books, but it fell into like, well, and then this happened. Well, then what else happened? Oh, yeah. And then this happened. So <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know how riveting that part of the episode was, but uh, I think yeah, the Pepe talk was good. It was spirited and. Uh, yeah. And it didn't. Yeah. It wasn't going to fly in the face of any any uh, comic ex- historians that are like, hey, this is this is a seminal work. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, no, uh, he's just a chill frog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Letters page. We have no letters. But hey, if you want to help us out on a future segment of the letters page, uh, send an email to letters at com, Or you can uh, record an MP3 and voice your opinions. Send it to the same email address. Or you can leave a voice message at 559-426-6427. It's 559-426-6427 or 559-426 comics yeah and just you know if you have thoughts on the button actually i'd be very curious to hear people's opinions on this whole the button watchman dc thing um or anything else what we're going to talk about in the future episode or what we've already talked about or maybe you got questions you know whatever we would love to slap a grolix on it uh either on the show or in a video or whatever Mm -hmm. if you have questions man send them our way yeah we well, yeah, we want to make you part of the show. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is Jesse. If you wear a dress and you have an animal Grolix, you're a princess. This has been Randy. Ohana means Grolix. Grolix means no one gets left behind. But if you want to leave, you can. I'll remember you, though. Listening to the Grolix Podcast. The Grolix Podcast is a production of the Electronic Media Collective and Vorpal Arrow Studios. For more Grolix Podcasts, check out GrolixPodcast.com. Also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, YouTube, ElectronicMediaCollective.com, Facebook.com slash Grolix Podcast, Twitter.com slash Grolix Podcast, all the dot com slash all the Grolix Podcast. <laughs> it takes a dark turn at the end. I'll remember you. <laughs> I'll remember you, you though. I won't remember Jay Garrick, but I'll remember you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your lightning rod. <laughs> I'll be your Freddy Fezbear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't blink. <laughs> I'm a terrible robot killer bear.